Hi, my name is Andrea Clary. I'm a field applications engineer for the Keithley products. And today I want to talk about how we can use a dual channel source meter product to perform a DC current gain or HFE test on a bipolar junction transistor. HFE, we're going to typically use this one to apply some sort of a voltage bias on the collector and we're going to measure the current, the collector current. And then whilst this channel would in this case for HFE is going to apply a current into the base and then from the ratio of the collector to the base current we know we know what the gain is. Now you know transistor data sheets are going to call out some test conditions for that. In this case it's saying we want uh, one volt on the collector and then we want to adjust that base current until we achieve uh, 10 milliamps and the ratio of that 10 milliamps to the required base current should result in a gain that's somewhere between 100 and 300. Now, using you know those those values of gain and this relationship, um, we can then we can estimate how much base current we're actually going to be required to inject. So somewhere you know 33 or as much as 100 microamps is going to be required to cause one, or sorry, 10 milliamps of current to flow when this guy's applying a one volt bias to the to the collector. So anyhow, let's take let's take a look. So first first pass on this, let's just do a manual manual operation on this. And I'm going to switch uh, the view here to a um, um, to an internal web page uh, virtual front panel of the source button here. So let's first set that collector voltage to one volt. So I'm going to uprange, I'm going to uprange again, and then I'm going to switch over and actually interact with, with the instrument. And I'm going to hit enter there. Now this, this measure button, similar to the display button, is just going to cause a carousel, but in this case of just the smooth B, what is displayed to be measured. So if I hit that, it's going to come to display ohms, watts, and then uh, amps, and then if I hit it again, it comes back to volts. Um, okay, now this one, so you know, we could turn that on. We apply our one volt, and no currents going because you know the base is being held off right now. Okay, so this one, we don't want to source voltage; we want to source current. So if I hit the source button, and then hit it one more time, and then you see it toggles to. So right now it just would toggle back and forth between being a voltage source. There's we want it to be a current source. I'm going to uprange my sourcing range here. Um, right, we're going to need as much as 100 microamps. So I'm going to go ahead and use use that um, use that range. Okay, let's test this. So I'll turn on that one, and I'm going to turn on this one. Okay, and I'm going to start adjusting there. So there's uh, 10 microamps into the base and we're getting 2.54 milliamps of collector current on channel B. I'm going to increase the um, base current, get more, go again, 30 microamps, 7.2, 40 microamps. Okay, that's really close. So I'm going to, I'm going to go down to the next digit, 41 microamps, 42, now we're a little over, so we'll come back to there. Okay, so we would now, we would note down these two numbers and compute our gain um, like it did here. So, you know, so it's, you know, it's basically, you know, it's, it's, it's an inspect part and you've been able to perform this test just with a simple source meter uh, manually operating it. Now, as a kind of a continuation of the topic, Rather than run the the test completely manually, you know, because maybe you know maybe that feels like it's going to take too much time. You don't want to do some arithmetic on the side, or you know, or even what if it's a power device where the data sheet there calls out that you need to do this under pulse mode, right? This manual operation I've shown up till now not going to not going to be consistent with that. So what you can do instead, and if you still want kind of a simple you know bench top tool without a computer tied to it is you can you can run a collection of commands 
uh, as a script on these on these instruments. And here I've shown some some screenshots where I used a a pulse mode script on it was actually this this component uh, four volts four amps. So um, so we tested it at uh, uh, near to near to four amps in spec, and then I'm able to with this script it prompts for an input parameter. You know, if I want it to, it's how I wrote the script that it's that it that it will do that. And so I'm able to instead of taking the default of four amps, I was able to provide an alternate value, and then that same exact you know saved script will uh, carry out the test at at that different condition. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, not a pulse mode this time because I don't I'm wired out to still to that little 2n uh, 3904. But so under menu. There's a uh, script, and we'll do enter, and we're, we want to load, and it's on the USB drive. So a script that I, you know, wrote, to, um, I, you know, so anyhow, I brought it to the instrument on on the thumb drive, and you know, I've got uh, a DC one, and then I've got a pulse mode one. But let's come back to the DC one for this, and then I'm going to do enter, and it says that it's been loaded as an anonymous script. Um, there and then I do want to make it active for run. Okay, so it's now the active act, active script in the runtime memory of this of this instrument. Okay, so when I press run, it's going to run and it's prompting me for the current. It's defaulting it to uh, 10 milliamps because that's how I wrote it. Um, so I'll just do that and boom, there it did did the test. Um, I can run it again. Only this time, let's uh, let's set the current to uh, you know 22. I'll hit enter, and there it is. So I hope you find that useful to you know get some insight into how these um, these instruments can become kind of purpose-built tools um, just by running running uh, running some scripts. Okay, thanks. Bye bye.